my dear. Our fate also depends on it. But why do you expect that he will leave us anything? Ah, my dear. He is so rich, and we are so poor. Well, that is hardly a sufficient reason, Mama. Oh, heaven! How ill he is! exclaimed the mother. Chapter 17 After Anna Mikhailovna had driven off with her son to visit Count Cyril Vladimirovich Bazukhov, Countess Rostova sat for a long time all alone applying her handkerchief to her eyes. At last she rang. What is the matter with you, my dear? She said crossly to the maid who kept her waiting some minutes. Don't you wish to serve me? Then he'll find you another place. The countess was upset by her friend's sorrow and humiliating poverty. And was therefore out of sorts, a state of mind which with her always found expression in calling her maid my dear and speaking to her with exaggerated politeness. I am very sorry, ma'am, answered the maid. Ask the count to come to me. The count came waddling in to see his wife with a rather guilty look as usual. Well, little countess. What a sauté of game oh my dear we are to have, my dear. I tasted it. The thousand rubles I paid for Terra's were not ill spent. He is worth it. He sat down by his wife, his elbows on his knees and his hands ruffling his grey hair. What are your commands, little countess? You see, my dear. What's that mess? She said, pointing to his waistcoat. It's the sauté, most likely, she added with a smile. Well, you see, Count, I want some money. Her face became sad. Oh, little Countess. And the Count began bustling to get out his pocketbook. I want a great deal, Count. I want five hundred rubles, and taking out her cambric handkerchief she began wiping her husband's waistcoat. Yes, immediately immediately. Hey, who's there? He called out in a tone only used by persons who are certain that those they call will rush to obey the summons. Send Dimitri to me. Dimitri, a man of good family who had been brought up in the Count's house and now managed all his affairs, stepped softly into the room. This is what I want, my dear fellow, said the Count to the deferential young man who had entered. Bring me. He reflected a moment, yes, bring me seven hundred rubles, yes. But mind, don't bring me such tattered and dirty notes as last time, but nice clean ones for the countess. Yes, Dimitri, clean ones, please, said the countess, sighing deeply. When would you like them, your excellency? Asked Dimitri. Allow me to inform you. But, don't be uneasy, he added, noticing that the Count was beginning to breathe heavily and quickly which was always a sign of approaching anger. I was forgetting. Do you wish it brought at once? Yes, yes. Just so. Bring it. Give it to the Countess. What a treasure that Dimitri is, added the Count with a smile when the young man had departed. There is never any impossible with him. That's a thing I hate. Everything is possible. Ah, money, Count, money. How much sorrow it causes in the world, said the Countess. But I am in great need of this sum. You, my little Countess, are a notorious spendthrift, said the Count, and having kissed his wife's hand he went back to his study. When Anna Mikhailovna returned from Count Bazukhov's the money, all in clean notes, was lying ready under a handkerchief on the countess' little table, and Anna Mikhailovna noticed that something was agitating her. Well, my dear? asked the countess. Oh, what a terrible state he is in. One would not know him, he is so ill. I was only there a few moments and hardly said a word. Annette, for heaven's sake don't refuse me, the countess began with a blush that looked very strange on her thin, dignified, elderly face, and she took the money from under the handkerchief. Anna Mikhailovna instantly guessed her intention and stooped to be ready to embrace the countess at the appropriate moment. 
This is for Boris from me, for his outfit. Anna Mikhailovna was already embracing her and weeping. The countess wept too. They wept because they were friends, and because they were kind-hearted, and because they friends from childhood had to think about such a base thing as money, and because their youth was over. But those tears were pleasant to them both. Chapter 18 Countess Rostova, with her daughters and a large number of guests, was already seated in the drawing room. The count took the gentlemen into his study and showed them his choice collection of Turkish pipes. From time to time he went out to ask. Hasn't she come yet? They were expecting Marya Dmitrievna Akrosimova, known in society as Le Terrible Dragon, a lady distinguished not for wealth or rank, but for common sense and frank plainness of speech. Marya Dmitrievna was known to the imperial family as well as to all Moscow and Petersburg, and both cities wondered at her.